show is dedicated today to the memory of our very good colleague, Edward Kwabi, Papa Kwesi Kwabi, who's passed on. Uh, yesterday he passed on. He left behind a wife and three uh, children, one seven month old. And so our prayers are with the family and the immediate family as well. And we pray that the good Lord will comfort them in these trying times and also um, be their provider in these difficult moments. The Ghanaian Times this morning says six die in accident at Obritema. No procurement process breaches at the EC. Alleged coup plotters committed to stand trial at High Court. Ghana may pay $93 million for Unipass deal if, but Deputy Minister allays fears. Police impound 1,000 motorcycles in Accra. The Daily Graphic, Methodist University dragged to court. 32 former employees want benefits paid. Parliament approves $23.98 million waiver for Platinum Properties Limited. And MTN launches book. Demonstration was our aim, not cool, McPalm says. But 10 to stand trial for treason. Nyaho celebrating history, laying the uh, right future foundation at 50. That's uh, Dr. Nyaho Nyaho Tamaklo. Captain, good morning to you. Daily Guide. Five... Uh, million euro Airbus bribe pops up at AG conference. President nominates three for Supreme Court. Comes with a photo of uh, uh, Mr. Clemens Honyega, Justice Tanku Amadu, and Mr. Yuni Kolendi, a trainer of many of our brilliant lawyers in this country. President nominates three for Supreme Court. And Bank deflates Adongo propaganda. Coup plotters wanted to kill Akufuado. That's there. Also, stories on page three. And finally, on the front page of the Finder, government chases Airbus bribe suspects. Rights to UK serious fraud office for names. No amount of resistance will stop Unipass rollout. Kweku Kwating, government pushes laws for automotive industry. Hearing loss, not receiving the needed attention. Audiologist. My guest this morning is lawyer Edruji Tamaklo. He's a member of the NDC's legal team and communication team. He's joined me here on the ticket of the NDC. And also, uh, senior Ablaobi Eric Chum. He is a uh, member of the NPP's communication team. He has also uh, got his eyes firmly fixed on the Fantiaqua uh, South seat. Gentlemen, welcome. Eric, how are you doing? I'm doing well. What's, happening? Doing, uh, What's happening in Fantiaqua? Uh, we are I doing, always we're want doing, to ready. check. We're doing well. Yeah. I mm. think that. Uh, uh, this morning is a solemn one mm. um, to start with I'll say good morning to everybody especially to the good people of Antioch mm. and especially my delegates mm. however um, my condolences to the bereaved family mm. especially uh, even a bigger family which is mm. TV3 mm -hmm. uh, to hear that there's been the sad demise of one of your own yeah. and I hope that the good Lord would actually keep him in his bosom. Uh, it's actually a, a very sad moment. Mm. And you know, sometimes some of these things actually brings a lot of things into perspective. I mean, as human beings, we feel that we are probably indestructible, mm. but we are actually very uh, fragile. So sometimes, I mean, within the whole political mm. conversation and everything, we just have to uh, realize that we have a maker and uh, mm. at any point in time we might be called so right. whatever it is that we do as far as i'm concerned should impact society positively and with all the uh, glowing tributes that mm. i've read and i've seen right. uh, it supposes that uh, mr kwabi led a very exemplary life right uh, did you? <coughs> good morning i mean uh, good morning and uh, good morning to our viewers and my good friend here um, let me also join him um, in the, um, expressing my very deepest condolences to the family of uh, the gentleman who, mm. um, you know, um, <coughs> the circumstance under <coughs> which he suffered those uh, injuries yeah. that he's been yeah. battling right. to date. I'm fairly it's actually part of the aware, presidential call exactly, that had the I'm, accident. Yeah, I'm fairly <coughs> aware of those details. And, uh, paid. I've read a lot on uh, Communal Cruces uh, um, timeline right. relative to the events leading to his death. It's mm. quite uh, a very painful one. I want to once again um, 
express my deepest condolence to the wife. Mm. I understand he has a, a seven month, seven old, month uh, yeah. baby. Right. In all of this is a prayer that the Almighty God will comfort them mm. in this trying moment. And to the media general mm. for mm. such a great <coughs> talent. Great. And so uh, thank you, uh, Eric Mello on Facebook. You're sending me a message asking that um, I stay strong and not um, allow emotions to take over. But it's not my fault. Please forgive me. Uh, it was quite close. So uh, it, will, it will come when it has to come. But let's start the conversation this way. Edwigi, yesterday, the, the group of political parties against the compilation of the new register had cause to publish some emails that had been written to the providers of the, um, if you will, the, the, the machines that we're using now, and which said that there is actually no problem with what we have, that the conversation that it is obsolete is actually not true. What, what are you seeking to expose, if I may ask? Very well. So once again, uh say good morning. Um, as you recall, the NDC together with the other political parties, mm -hmm. we have indicated that the reasons advanced by Jane Mensah and Boss Manasari mm -hmm. to compile a new register, right. those reasons are nothing beyond falsehood, half truths, and what you call a package of lies just to justify this reckless procurement engagement and the so-called claim to undertake the compilation of a new register. Mm. Now, if you recall, among other things, mm -hmm. Madame Jane Mensa and Bosman Asari, in all their media engagement to the people of this country, one of the reasons they canvass is the fact that the equipment that we have, that the BVR, mm. as we have them now, have become obsolete. Right. And on that basis, they are unable to use them for the next election. Mm. Now, we have indicated that it is these same so-called obsolete items mm -hmm. that you've used for the first time under the 1992 Constitution mm -hmm. to compile, in fact, to, 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 to do the, the, the creation of the new regions. Mm -hmm. It didn't end there. As late as 17th day of December 2019, you elected over 6,000 assemblymen across the length and breadth of this country mm. using the same equipment. And so we have said that beyond the reckless desire mm. by Madame J. Mensah and Bosman Asari to spend taxpayers' money recklessly, there's no other justification. So to add that authenticate some of this claim, mm. we decided to engage more directly with the initial vendor. Okay. And so what we did was to send certain questions mm. to the vendor. Okay. And Wh which vendors are these? Let's let's get no that straight. HSB. HSB. And okay. if you recall, Madame Jane Mensah, in all their <coughs> correspondences, stated that H uh, um, HSB had indicated to them that their equipment were obsolete. Mm. And so we asked Madame Jane that this report from the consultant. Mm. Can you give us the report? So that within the spirit of transparency, we can interrogate mm. the report ourselves. So that if this is what the consultant is saying and it's true, we can say go ahead. So when we what, did what, the, what response was given to you? The Electoral Commission, as we speak today, had refused to give out that report. They have decided that they will not. And the only reason is simple. Because the report does not contain the claim they are making. Look, when we ask this question, the one who responded is uh, uh, Mr. Marcel uh, Bogart. Okay, what is, of, his, what is his strength in that company? Oh, no, he's one of the topmost. Okay. H, uh, HSB Identification BV, mm. based in the Holland, right. in the Netherlands. Mm. And this is why he says that the current BVRs are not obsolete. He proceeds, although the notebooks of the current need to be upgraded. Mm. Components like the fingerprint scanners were very robust and fit for use. He proceeds. Enrollment software could easily be upgraded mm. with facial recognition, a feature that had been incorporated in their new software mm. release. Mm. 
These are the very thing Madame J. Mensa says is the reason why she needs to compile a new register. Mm. Today, the vendor had come out to say that the claim made by Madame J. Mensa and Bosman Asari are completely false. So what it means is that Madame Jane Mensa and Bosman Asari decided to lie to the people of this country. That, that, that's, to too, justify. that's too strong to say that they Look, lied. Look, but that's a lie. If I peddle on truth on this platform, it's, on, it's a lie. And, and you see, look, what we should all know is that elections go to the very core of our democracy. And I've always challenged my friends in the MPP that, look, in 2012, when the first biometric register was compiled, mm. by 2010, Nanado Dankwe Kufuado and the Dankwa Institute had proposed that, look, let's have a biometric register mm. because... Unlike the previous, mm. if you have a biometric register, you will not have to be doing a new biometric because your fingerprints cannot quote and quote spoil for mm. want of mm. better mm. way. Okay? And so once you have the fingerprint impression, you are better off. Okay. What happened? We were told that, okay, the NDC eventually, we built a national consensus. Mm. Based on it, we compared the 2012. Do you know that by 2011, Afarijan had already done the contracting and everything. I'll show you something right now. See, this is the Electoral Commission RFP RFP. Technical Evaluation Report. Okay. It's dated 20th January 2020. Okay. I'll just put a portion for you. These are the three companies, Madam J. Mensa and her mm. EC shortlisted. Mm. Smartmatics International Holding. They, they, they've been Systemat disqualified from, yeah. from No, so I'm list. coming. The Intel Digital Solutions. Thales is a French company. Yes. They are getting the deal And now. I will tell you, principal persons in government who are behind tails, it's getting scary. And then you have Mero System Company Limited and Bug Press. Now look at the pricing. $70 million. Bug Press is Ghanaian, right? Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, coffee mm. You know, if you look at tails, mm. $70 million, okay. exclusive of taxes and local duties. Mm -hmm. Smartmatics International, $69 million, inclusive of taxes and local duties. Okay. Now, frankly, could you, for example, of Imani says you, that... I'm coming there. Hold on. He says that uh, Smartmatic mm -hmm. is more qualified you, than you, Thales you, I'm even coming in, in the document it's they published. It's because of the people behind Tales. Who, who are the people behind it? Very No, persons who are so close to the president. You are sure? No. In fact, the next press conference... We are going to release each one of them. Johnny, the, Johnny, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on for me. I'm, I'm here. You the local, me no, 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 oh, you, will, so, you will. So, you will have your time. The local, I, I, I'm, I'm interested look, in... The local rep mm. per the, the, the evaluation or tender guideline. Mm. You are supposed to have a local rep. Right. Who is this local rep? Smartmatics International Holdings. Mm. Its local rep is Peso. Okay. Till Digital. Its local rep is they, they Rama. Talis. Uh, 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 mm. You know, because the French, they, they are, yeah, they are yeah. silent on the, uh, uh, yeah. you know. Their local rep is Raman Company. Go okay. and find out who is behind Raman. Who Go is behind? You, you are telling me. No, no. Me. I mean, because. Who alleges must no, prove. No, we have a press conference on that specifically. Mm -hmm. That's why I he, don't want He to. who alleges must prove is no, a, is a maximum you, of equity. No, I've told you here. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, please, hold on. So he's been I, speaking I for like prove. 20 minutes. No, it's not oh, 20 minutes. He started at 15, uh, Eric. Okay. So he's speaking for seven finally, minutes. Finally. Yeah, right. So you're going to give me seven minutes? Yes, you will get your. As we speak. Whatever he gets, you get. As we speak, look at this. Tenderest delivery schedule after signed contract. 8,000 BVRs, 84 days. Okay. 80,000 BVDs, 150 days. Mm. So what it means is that even if Jane Mensa has signed the contract as of last week, this company is saying that they need 84 days mm. in order to deliver the item because mm. it's made up of lithium battery. Right. Lithium-powered batteries. Mm. And so they cannot airlift them. As we speak, the contract has just been signed. They need 84 days. Meanwhile, Madame Jane Mensa had already come out through her assigns mm. that by the 18th day of April, right. they will start the process. Right. When, as we speak, even the items to do the registration, the 8,000 BVR, are not even in the but, jurisdiction. But I thought that Imani was raising questions about procurement yes, breaches. Yes. And Madame Jane Mensa, I'm, I'm reading in the Times that uh, deep protest source at the EC says, there's never been anything like that. So you this see, whole see, procurement breach you that, see, that you you're see, screaming about you doesn't exist. No, you see, when you come out 
and you give a reason why you want to procure something. Mm. And it turned out that that reason is even false in the first place. Remember that one of the justifications, the political parties have indicated that we can upgrade the system. Jemesa comes out and says, look, the cost of upgrading the system will be a certain amount, 70 right. million, mm. right? 74 million dollars. Mm. Okay. And then the, the cost of getting a new one was 56. Now you, you were exposed there. Already, the contract details shows how much, 69 million dollars. Mm. Per their own evaluation report. This M mind the mic. Oh, sorry. Seventy million dollars. Right. And that relates to only the BVRs and BVDs. We are now going to procure the software, mm. the election management software, separate. So by the time you put the two costs together, of compiling a new register. We are already in the region of one fifty million dollars. That's that's the money's position. No, but that's the that, that's the fact because already this is seventy million. Mm. Meanwhile, you say the cost of upgrade will be what seventy four. Mm. Yeah, seventy four. Exactly, right. and this just for the, the the hardware component, the electoral management software is going to cost us another seventy. Bottom million. line is what. So already, your claim that. Upgrade will be more expensive mm. than compiling a new. Has already been demonstrated. Bottom line, EC says the EC is playing. Uh, the Imani says EC is playing dangerous games. In what, fact, what I, I watch your interview with with uh, Mr. Franklin yeah, Kujo. Yeah. You put him to street proof everything, and the danger is that if, as we speak, the item for this whole registration mm. is not even in the jurisdiction. You are yet to train your people. You are yet to do pilot, uh, uh, piloting of the processes. Mm. The danger Madame Jane Mensah is putting this country through mm. is so dangerous that it matters not what political party that you belong to. We can see the danger sign. The first one, she cannot start the compilation. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm wrapping up. She cannot start the compilation on the 18th day of April because even from the, this whole thing, the people need 84 days 84 to deliver. Days. Right. That 84 days runs us already into May. When are you going to get these items? Clear them from the port. Train your officers on the 8,000 BVR before you start the company. So you're saying we it should, should abandon the it process. Is, it is not about NDC MPP. We are saying that our law allows us to do limited registration. So you can do limited registration and capture the first time voters. Mm. That's what you do. Where Madame Jane Mensah is going, very, very dangerous thing. It is not about MPP, it is not about NDC. Let's speak to the fact. Thank you. Eric, <laughs> step in for me. Edouji has made see, a, a yeah. lot of, uh, oh, I can if you like, you and, and his, his broad documents. Need, I don't need, I don't need your so he spoke so. for 10 minutes. I, I'll give you, you see, the same. You're starting you at uh, 27. So let, let's go. Johnny. The MPP's position is very simple on this matter. Mm. And I will not sit here and even attempt to speak for the EC. Okay. You understand? But it's extremely very simple. And our track record actually points to the fact that since 1992, almost every improvement in our electoral process mm. has been championed by the MPP. I mean, issues to do with opaque ballot boxes and black and white and uh, having your thumb uh, print on all of mm. those things all the way through to the uh, issue of biometric mm. register and then no verification, mm. no mm. votes mm. and all of those things are all major improvements that has been championed by the MPP. Okay. Now, the framers of the constitution probably foresaw this conversation that we are having okay. here. And I keep asking this question. It's a very, probably very simplistic question. Mm. I'm saying that in an era where you have two major mm. schools of thought yeah. that a register should be done or a, regi a register should, should, not, should, should not, not be, be done, done right? what happens? And that is the reason why the Constitution is extremely explicit. And he's a lawyer. And it's very good that he's a lawyer. It's yeah. explicit that the only institution in this country that is mandated to make decisions like that is the Electoral Commission. Who are subject to the people of Ghana. Of course, but that's why I'm saying that when there's a stalemate, mm. what happens? Tell me. That is the reason why the framers, the, the wisdom of the framers of the Constitution ensure that the, uh, the, the, the independence of the Electoral Commission is 
Un I mean, it, there, it's, it's clear. Mm. It's enshrined in the constitution mm. to ensure that they make decisions for the whole country. You understand? Now, this whole conversation about having a register or not having a register and the NDC's position has been changing consistently. But they, now they are, they are but, quoting yeah, figures. But the point is, he, they, they, can, they, can, they, can, they can quote figures. But of, the, point, the Electoral Commission's own report. Listen, yes, you see, they can quote figures. Mm. But the truth of the matter is that, and he knows, this argument that the NDC is making is not based on any issue to do with uh, value for money mm. or technical mm. issues and all that. It's a political conversation. But, but he just and, quoted figures. But, but you see, it is, it is, it's, smart it's, it's, it is political. And and it is digital. political. I don't need it. I don't need it. <laughs> you see, it's political gimmickry. Okay. Right? And it's also extremely dangerous. What they are doing actually is more dangerous but, than but, but the accusation. Quoting, but they are quoting they can, figures. I, I don't need that. All I'm saying That's is that. That's the Electoral Commission's report. All I'm saying is that, mm. you see, we have to contextualize this conversation. Properly. Okay. How do we Even the it? existing register okay. that we have now, if you go back to the uh, Justice VCRAC crap crap, right. report mm. that suggested that there were anomalies in that particular register, mm. of course, over the period, we've been able to use it. And the EC, in its own wisdom, after consultation with its consultants and everything, decides that, listen, it will be imperative that we have a brand new register Towards the 2020. This is the same no, EC that says that the Johnny, register Johnny, Johnny, Johnny. is unfallible. You are, you are, you are, no, I'm, are, I'm asking. I'm asking. You're you you trying to distract my I'm, I'm sorry. I asked, yeah, him, I asked him questions. No, so let too. me finish. When, I, I asked him questions too. Hold, yeah. hold on for me, my yes. brother. Now, this is the same EC. Just as VCRAC Crab report, EC thinks it is imperative to have a new register. But this same EC mm -hmm. has been able to organize, as the NDC says, as others have said, okay. uh, create new regions with this same register, uh -huh. do enough. a local fair, election. Fair, fair, fair. And they said that the register is credible. How did the position fair, change? Fair enough. I mean, I don't think that the EC made a position on the credibility. Mm or not off the register. The mm. position that they have made, and they listed a plethora of reasons why it was important that we change the register, right? And I'm saying that, going by even that, there were all sorts of major issues with the register, issues to do with, at the point, Abu Ramadan, the famous Abu Ramadan mm. case, mm. going to issues and to do with, and even all of the other com uh, conversations that emanated from the EC itself at the point, uh, Madame Charlotte Osei accusing uh, Mr. Amadou Sule of mm. tampering with the register and all of those. And I think that if they are calling for uh, equity and they are calling for um, making sure that there's peace and tranquility in this country mm -hmm. towards the 2020 mm -hmm. elections and, and beyond, it is important that everybody is happy with that particular register. Right. We go in there and you should ask the NDC, why are they so scared of having a new register? Why are they so scared? What is in that register that is so scary that they do not want anybody to change it? Your, ma 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 majority, it majority leader in parliament, but, 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 yes. also, I remember at the, um, the rally at the Independence Square, at the yeah, trade fair, said that if we change the register, there's no way the NDC will come to power. Don't no, you no, think that could be I don't speak, a reason I, why I don't the speak, NDC... I don't speak for the majority. Well, but he spoke. Right? He, he made it public. I haven't actually... We have the tape, my, actually. My position is very shall, simple. Shall we play the tape my for position, you to see? I, well, I have, it's, it's, not not, it's not important. He's not contested. I haven't seen it. I haven't heard it. But the point is that, you see, this whole conversation, trying to um, denigrate the personality of the uh, uh, EC chair mm. and her deputy, and even commentary that has come from a former president of this country okay. and the current flag bearer of the NDC, mm. suggesting that if the register is changed, there's going to be chaos and mayhem that's in this country. Correct. It's that's so, not correct. It's, so, it's rather most unfortunate. Eric, you understand? It is correct. He that's mentioned that. He said that, that well, I mean, when you, to wait, when you say that, so I'm going to say, to wait, 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 I'm, I'm saying, you see, but it, you see this, I ha, I'm not convinced by all of these things that the NDC is doing. And even this conversation about emails, conversation, you don't believe that, it. does not necessarily mean anything. Really? The EC, as far as I'm concerned, you see, and it's important because, you see, we it, have it this took, conversation. It, it took, let a, me, let me it took an email for you to cancel the PDS deal. Let, let me finish. And you let, say let, the let emails let from, from a company Because something. all I'm saying is that we have to be very consistent okay. in this country, <clears> right? And some of these things that we do has to be anchored in values and principles. We have a constitution. Mm. And we have 
the mandate of various institutions. We sit in this country and quote Obama all the time and right. say that, well, we need uh, strong, strong institutions, institutions and not strong men and all of those things. Again, we pick and choose certain aspects of the constitution that we want to follow. The same people who are running helter skelter all over the place for expediency's sake and parochial interest, right, would quote the same constitution mm. and ask that it should be uh, prescribed to the letter. But, you but, understand? So that's but, why I'm let's, saying let's speak that to the is, details So that tell me proposed. exactly what the EC has done wrong here. Yes. And when the constitution suggests that mm. the EC has a mandate to compile a register, what does that mean? But it means at, that... At, yeah, at, so, what, at what cost? But, but it, 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 it doesn't doing, prescribe uh, uh, that. For me. You understand? Allow it doesn't understand. prescribe that. And I'm saying that. I don't want to, to sit here and go at the angle of trying to... I'm but, saying but they are, they look, we are all Eric, we are all Eric, stakeholders. Eric, Eric we are I, all I like, stakeholders. I like, your, I like your I like your optimism, I, <clears throat> but but here is a document that they are pr presenting. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, electoral yeah. commissions. Oh, hold on. So that's the Johnny, electoral commission. I, I'm coming. Hold yes, on for me. Yeah. That's the electoral commission of Ghana. Mm. The RFP technical evaluation report exactly. for electoral commission EC is uh, submission date was on the 20th of January. 2020. That's the Electoral Commission's report. Okay. Now, in it, they're saying that what Madame G. Mensa and the team have been telling us, that to retrofit the old register will cost us $74 but million. Dollars. The, the issue hold is on, to hold do on with for cost. me. Hold on, hold on for me. That, but that's hold why the me. NDC itself but, but then and other uh, if, if we must <laughs> against the compilation of the new register have shifted the goal no, they, they have they kept shifting but the goal allow, allow, allow me to finish yeah, my question that's what i'm saying that's what i'm saying that is it allow I'm me asking to finish you my an extremely important question allow me and i'll make it very no, simple and i'm not asking my question no, but i can also ask you a question mm -hmm. so it's an but I'm, I'm asking you i'm asking you a very simple question i don't answer questions by the way well then okay i'm saying that in the event that the NDC and its allies okay. go, on, go on the streets agitating for not compiling a new register. And the MPP and its allies also go on the street that we also want a new register. What would happen? And that is the reason why it's the wisdom of the uh, framers of that particular constitution that let's give that the benefit of the doubt and the, the, the uh, freedom right mm. for the ec to make these decisions okay you understand so for me as far as i'm concerned questions to do with timelines and everything these are things that it needs to be answered by the ec okay but now, to sit here okay. and use the ndc's position mm -hmm. other people's position mm -hmm. as a justification for the ec not to do its work as far as i'm concerned it's a dangerous precedent okay so, so now, because you're, you're, you're uh, uh, question. can yeah, i ask my yeah. question now <laughs> okay so my question is that it is the right of the Electoral Commission to compile a new register. Exactly. The Electoral Commission... In, 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 with the with consultation the of stakeholders, which they have done, and the NDC consistently have refused to sit at the table because they had taken an intransigent and a trend position. Okay. And so, you see, when we have this conversation, we have to be candid with ourselves. Can I, can I ask my question now, please? So it is the right of the Electoral Commission to, to compile a new register. Yes. Um, the NDC and their allies have said that one meeting doesn't constitute consultation. In fact, the Committee of Eminent Persons have also said that we need to have a lot more consultation. Professor Rans, for example, in that Hot Issues conversation said that you, sometimes you need to go behind the, the main table and ask the question. Now, we are to trust the Electoral Commission and believe in the independence of the Electoral Commission. By its own report, the Has data... the Electoral Commission come out to say that Hold they on. are not... Hold able on, hold to meet on. the April, Let me finish uh, my April 18th deadline. Have they been able to do that? They haven't come out to do so. Now, I'm, so I can't I'm, answer that for I'm, them. I'm leaning on this report. So you can you have the all, the, you have the, all the apparatuses I'll, in I'll, this country. Allow me to you ask, can go there and ask them. Allow me to ask my question, my brother. But I, I don't so speak for I am easy. leaning on the Electoral Commission's own data. Yes. Then and comparing that with what they have put out there in the mm. public domain. Uh -huh. And this data is pointing to a different story that from what they have already put they out. They are unable to meet the timeline. That suggests that they are either undercoating or overcoating. Does that put trust in you no, for the Electoral see, Commission? The, the thing is that, you see, this conversation around the NDC statement, you see, you are, you are buying into the No, this propaganda. is the Electoral... I'm, I'm, you've I'm, been, not, you've I'm not using... Doing, see, I'm not using... This, this is the right. NDC right. document. And even if you read 80% <laughs> of Eric, what is Eric, in there Eric, is an attack Eric, on the personality this is of the, Madame This is the Mesa. NDC's That's document. Yes. I'm not quoting from and it. And I am saying to you... I'm using the Electoral Commission's document. You see, document. listen, as, as, a, as a media house, 
you, you are in possession of this document. Right. And, and, and I'm you, using the Electoral how Commission document. How many attempts have you made mm. at actually checking with the Electoral Commission to ascertain the veracity of the claims that they've made, to ascertain if really, well and truly, but they are yeah. able to meet the timelines of the media, med media has been asking questions about the Electoral Commission's <laughs> website. They are not answering. Yeah, but have you been to the... You know the location of the... the but they are not answering. So you are going to ask ABC, me ABC a political... News, ABC News uh, has uh, gone uh, there uh, to uh, ask. Uh, they are not answering. that uh, I should answer for the EC. No. Mm. But all, all I'm saying is that let's situate this conversation in the context. And next, Norway and MP for Ashama went to Electoral Commission, mm -hmm. wrote through Martin Pebble listen, to ask listen, for the procurement listen, document. Listen. The EC but flatly you are, you are, denied you are, you are, it. Yeah, you see, you are shifting the goal. I'm not. Red herrings. You I'm, are behaving like a doji. If there's two of you against me, that's no, unfair. No, 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 no. All I'm Eric, saying is that. Eric's all I'm saying. Is, all I'm saying. Is, you know, yeah, you know me and you. Listen. All I'm saying. is that, uh, Yes. You see, all I'm saying is that it's extremely important mm. that. Sometimes these conversations are done devoid of sentiment and right. emotions, okay. right? And I foresee that if you're unable to mm -hmm. deal with this mm -hmm. problem, okay. and a lot of people who have commented on this particular <coughs> issue Sorry. haven't even mm -hmm. averted their minds to this thing that I'm saying. I'm saying that the reason why the framers of the Constitution okay. ens mm -hmm. ensured that the independence of the EC is, is protected is mm -hmm. because there was always going to be a time where there was going to be a stalemate. Okay. And I believe strongly that to test our constitution, to test our democracy, we should allow the, in, uh, the, the EC to do what is mandated that, to that's do. Where we need to it go doesn't lie here. with me or you or the NDC to suggest to the AC what is right or wrong. Okay. You understand? Because even the issue to do with stakeholders, when you have stakeholders who are coming from two different schools of thought, okay. what happens? <coughs> you know, and I believe <coughs> that if we do that consistently, then the AC <coughs> themselves would have the confidence to do what is right. Okay, so you're saying that even if we have seen on the face of the pink sheet that the figures don't tally, we should, because the, of independence issues, means, but you also we, sh know, we should not ask questions. You also know my position on this matter. Okay. I will not sit here. In the dying minute of his time. Let me finish. The engagement with him has been more than 10 minutes. But let me round up then. Let me round up. You see, now that you gave him more than 10, you see him. But you are in opposition. What is your... My position on this matter, and you know me, Right. Yeah. I don't sit here and countenance this thing. I, 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 I've seen that the last time I was here, mm. this conversation about the EC website, yeah, yeah. a lot of fair people have taken it up that I have said that it's unacceptable and everything. But, and I have but not, you're a professional. Yes, and I have no challenge with yeah. that. So I'll not sit here and countenance crass or incompetence mm. from the EC, mm. or if there's blatant uh, disregard for regulations. And I will mm. not sit here and do that. Right. All I'm saying is that we need to be careful how we... Com I mean, communicate these things, right? right? Mm -hmm. And put it in proper context. That mm. it's, it's, a, it's political okay. and it's democratic, mm. which means that at every point in time, there's going to be either divergence in views and opinions and all that. Mm. That is why these institutions are there okay. to, and mandated to do what they are supposed thank, to thank do. Thank you. Thank you. And, uh, and, and let if me I give you one minute, I'll give him one minute. Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Let me just do. My, 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 my brother kept, uh, kept asking, oh, okay, so what is the NDC afraid of? You claim you have won the election with mm. one million votes. But we did. Oh, hold on. We did. Hold on. We did. Hold on, kindly. So what are you afraid of? Of a yeah, register that gives you one million? We are afraid. We are standing but, by but, the but, position. Is there more reason why Listen, we should we are standing. We, hold our position hold is simple. Is we stand reason? by the EC's mandate it's, 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 to compile a new all, register. And we support improvement when, when? in the electoral process. But, 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 but Eric, you, you won the election through one million votes. By one million votes. Yes. Why haven't you gazetted the results? Why? Is it the responsibility? You should be interested in it. No, but we are not the ones who have to gazette. You see, John, you are being mischievous this morning. But is it what I say? Listen, my one is it the responsibility of the MPP government to gather the results? No, no, no. Who was the EC chair before Jimenez took over? Charlotte. Why didn't she gather the results? The result? EC is a, cont a continuum. Isn't exactly. It? So you can ask them you those say, questions. Okay. Say, so I'll go and ask them. Back Thank you. to the issues. When the MPP speaks to the mandate of the Electoral Commission, mm. they mischievously deal with one end and leave the other. Which Why? Is? The independence of the EC doesn't matter to you. It's independent. Mm. But Jane Mensah in critiquing Madame Charlotte Jose, told us that the Electoral Commission should know that it is accountable to the people of this country. Of course. And so the question of its independence should not be construed as a body that is floating on the high seas by itself. 
That's JMN says. But you cannot advice. also heckle the Hold electoral commission. That JMN says advice then. Okay. Because the shoe was on the other side. It was a convenient as advice. As IEA boss. Then as IEA boss. Hmm. Today, she has taken a posturing that is completely different from the advice then. But even more important, what is this mandate about? Article 45, mm -hmm. 46 deals with the constitutional functions of the Electoral Commission. And it says that the Electoral Commission shall compile and revise the register at such intervals as by law determined. As we speak, mm -hmm. no one, no court of law has invalidated the current register. So, ah, but what does that mean? But, 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 but at what point do we need a court? Electoral no, as a court of law. Eric, you have your one minute. Eric, you have your one minute. Eric, come on. Do can we need a court? But you see, don't allow me to go in there. I am saying that. Yes. Do we need a court to do that? Yes, because the constitutional provision is that you will compile and revise. So, in 2012, Oh, listen, kindly. There are two words in one okay. provision. Mm. Compile and revise. And revise yeah. So what it means is that having compiled, so mm. the current register stands compiled. Right. Mm -hmm. The constitution says and revise. Mm -hmm. So that revision aspect of the constitutional provision, they don't talk about and, it. And the electoral commission is saying that, look, instead of uh, revising, and, we and, want and, to compile and, and, because we think there's a problem with the present do you register. Know something? Yeah. And you have advanced reasons why you want to do that. Mm. And one of the reasons is that costs. Right. You want to introduce certain yeah, functionalities but, among yeah. other things. Mm. This cost argument have been shown to be dubious. That's the no, point. but that is your position. And, that is not and, true. And let us all be this clear. Is, this is more than one minute. So when no, 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 you have No, but you even left. interacted and took the one minute. You took Go on, make progress. Yeah. So I am saying that if we look at even this document, mm. listen to what the company, it's his own report, is saying. Okay. It says that Lasting had its own factory with port accesses. It produces its own fingerprint sensors. Lastly, mentioned that at the demonstration that they have the ability to produce 6,000 units of the fingerprint scanners in a month. Okay. So it's upon the signing of the contract that mm. they are going to produce. That is, that is conjecturing. No, no, this is it. No, no, but, no but that's conjecturing. No, I mean, no, that is the, but, but, no, that, say, but I, that's, that is a very simplistic. Uh, no, I mean, the man uh, is. Uh, is, that, is that what he means? That, that is not what he means. That until you have a contract, you will not be manufacturing. No, if you don't have a contract, if I have not signed a contract, there are four tenders. On what basis would you go ahead and no, but this, when you this, have this, not won this, the bid, or Jemensa had already listen, informed listen. them that they win? Listen, listen. No, all I'm saying, okay. all I'm saying, really? all I'm really? saying is that ask Eduji <laughs> what the real reason. Not interested reason in what the reason? But he's been, he's been pushing. I, this I don't want to see you. it. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Want, I don't have to see it. But all I'm saying is that you see, we have to be me and you. We yeah, are yeah. young <laughs> in this game. You understand? We are going to be doing this thing for a very long time. We have to be. Honest and candid ourselves. And this is it. They the NDC's truth. position mm. would not hold sway because it is not constitutionally and um, I mean in, in that, That's a year and two of stand. No, no, it's not. But the reason why I'm saying that is because you see, it's almost as if that we can take every uh, provision in our constitution and subject it to the same way the NDC is doing that. I, I agree. I disagree. I agree. I disagree. Mm. What kind of country would we be running? Right, it's akin to this conversation, which is a vexed one, and one of your favorite conversation about uh, radio stations that were not following the mm -hmm. uh, uh, due process and, and, and yeah, were not and paying for mm -hmm. spectrum and everything. In as much as people have an argument for uh, what do you call it, uh, freedom of speech mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. all of those mm -hmm. things, there's also a provision in there that states that mm -hmm. you, when you have a license, there are A, B, C, D that you're supposed to do. Right. You're also using. A spectrum that is meant to be mm. the property of the people uh, holding trust for the people of this country. Okay. You understand? So the uh, responsibilities, mm. right, mm. and the rights also comes with, with, with some responsibilities yeah. on your part. Mm. It's not the case. Okay. So I'm saying that whilst we are having this conversation, the NDC are actually surreptitiously out there mm. preparing. I mean, to actually get their people to go out there and register. Oh, but they've been, they're doing out, that. They've they've been, been out in yeah, the yeah. streets. You know, so and this, whole, I guess is that this, all, this whole thing that they are doing is all just a public show, just to show to the public that when election, of course, would go, would, they, they would go the same including way. Including the red flags. Yeah, will go right. the same way, and right? Would then expose the them to the fact that, oh, it's because the, NDC, uh, the EC compiled a new register and all of those things. But those, my, are the same, interestingly those, enough, those are the same tactics that they use. They are using enough, my, the certain my, siege mentality that they have used over the period. But Ghanaians have become more sophisticated. My, my, my so so the, the questions they are raising, hold on for me, the questions they are raising about 
the the inconsistencies in the hmm. figures as well. I haven't it. seen when I get I mean the authentic <laughs> source of that particular document. Or I know I know that look Imani, I would Imani Africa to. Imani Africa for example Imani Africa. has been raising so these due, questions and Imani respect. Imani I know uh -huh. has published an A to L mm -hmm. pointers mm -hmm. you know. It used to be K, but then they added L to it. Mm -hmm. And they've been saying that the Electoral Commission lied, mm -hmm. that the figures but they got he, wrong. He, and the Electoral Commission, that, surprisingly, yeah. has not, not officially responded. Let me, let me that, tell that you something. Worry that, you. That, that I'll call, I mean, I'm sure I'll get into trouble for this. Uh, intellectual arrogance oh, is no. must stop. No. There are people of equal expertise, equal intellect, or sometimes even superior intellect who are either consultants or who are people who work at the EC as well. You see, that's why I'm saying that. Because we have agreed, mm. and I, I still I keep using the tenets of democracy in these conversations, we are not mandated to agree on everything. People, even the, you are a lawyer, even, even the, the law. Are glaring. But what is the fact? We have a constitution, we have a legal framework and everything, but lawyers go to court all the time you see, and they have you different see, positions okay. you see, on issues. Okay. Is, is that not the case? You okay. see, that's what I'm saying. That The fact that somebody is an uh, uh, an expert or mm. claims to be an mm. expert on the matter comes and delivers a, a paper right does not make it sacrosanct mm. you understand okay. that is the reason you why say, say, they, there's say, a wisdom say, of the johnny okay. Okay. Let's 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 switch. no but there are there are there are there are things in place to do with it between my good self and eric mm. if the electoral commission for instance comes out to say that look we are basing this decision to compile on this a b c d reason right it is our constitutional responsibility to interrogate those reasons. Right. Two, if the Electoral Commission comes out to say that, the basis of this is because of an IT consultant's report. Mm. And it turns out that this IT consultant is so conflicted by reason of him being a director of fairness. Yeah, but you see, that is the reason. So that is it, the reason. It, it, it provides. Uh, the reason no, I have a GC here is simple. The NDC's position where, on this matter it, it has shifted and changed and and from one point to the other. You know, look, look, you get to a point where I don't you see know, that. I don't know that. The consultant's report is either self serving or completely dubious. Okay. Well, in fact, so, Imani, man, Imani, man, Imani, for example, last Saturday, Imani says that there was a technical committee that was set up to vet this mm -hmm. from the EC's yeah. own quarters. Yeah. Now, the allegation is that the technical committee was asked to alter their report or their findings but to see, reflect but that. Is, hold, hold, hold on for me. 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 A member of the allow he chaired that particular allow me, technical evaluation. Allow me to finish my question. Allow me to finish my question. Now, Imani showed me documents. Yes. To prove that, that people were, were asked to that there alter were, the, there the, were uh, official communication asking that they were asked to, to alter. alter, and when they uh -huh. refused, uh -huh. the chairman of that committee uh, resisted. Yes. He had to resign. The committee was dissolved. Agreeing that work for four months, and it was compressed into a one-week work, which is the result we are seeing. And Imani, for example, goes on to do calculation and tells me that it will not. The figures do not add up, and we should be worried that's, about that's, that. You see, you see, we sit in this country. And we're doing the same thing, you know. Yesterday, it was a, I mean, I'm digressing a little bit because um, it's important. Okay. But we're talking about issues to do with yeah. law and everything. Yeah. Yesterday, I was on Metro with Eduji, mm. where you have an individual who had gone through a whole court process mm. and has been jailed for seven years for alleging, allegedly yeah. defiling yeah. a 12-year-old. Mm. It, it was jailed for 15 out that years. After the seven years, mm. he was free. We have to mm. be very careful. In this country, okay, you understand. It does no, that does not mean that you don't criticize or you do not ask or probe for questions and all of mm. these things to make all these wild, wild allegations about persons. And when you are pushed to actually substantiate, you are unable to do that. We have prosecuted so many people, and maybe we are guilty of it. And other but, people, but when are guilty the issue well. itself, but who is being, but that who is is being why I am, restored, that is why I am if saying, you may, is not answering the questions or is not I, responding. I, yes, and that's why I mean, is the EC you know quiet? My, you know my position. Why is the EC quiet? The EC is meant to go out there and defend itself and uh, go out there and explain all of these things. But why are they speaking? I am actually speaking in terms of principle. Okay. And the principle of it is that it doesn't change. And my party's position is very simple, mm. that we will support the EC, any EC, at any point in time, especially when what it is that they are uh, looking for mm. is to improve the electoral process. Okay. That is the MPP's position. Thank you. And I, I think it's a very simple position. Okay. Thank you very much. Most grateful. 020216633. That's our WhatsApp line. And I'm looking at uh, what else to, to look at. I've seen the Unipass 
uh, fly around in, in a couple of them. Maybe we'll look at it briefly and then we will call it a morning here. And uh, well, since um, page 28, it comes in a photo of Mr. Kweku Kwating. He's a deputy finance minister. It says the government will have to pay uh, 92.97 million uh, dollars as compensation if the unit pass contract is terminated within the first year of its implementation. Key paragraphs of the 10 page or 10 year sole source contract signed in March 2018 has revealed a copy of the contract cited by the Ghanaian Times states that in parts that in the event of an early termination of this agreement by the government or in the event that the Ghana link exercise uh, exercises its right to terminate the agreement due to material breach by the government and in the absence of any material default by the contract uh, contractor of this agreement the government shall compensate the contractor for any losses in accordance with the scale of compensation as a set out below the termination within year one from compensation uh, date will be nine two Point nine seven million. The senior senior minister Asafumafo, in a letter dated February 26, 2020, directed the freight forwarders, um, clearing agents, and other stakeholders in the country to use the Unipass system to clear their goods from Sunday, March 1, 2020. However, the importers could not carry out the senior minister's instruction because there was no Unipass system in place at the ports when they got there on Monday, uh, March 2, 2022 clear their goods and therefore uh, had to use the existing systems of the GC net and West Blue. Eric, what is so unique about Unipass that we can't we can't let it go? That's the word on the street. What is so unique about Unipass? Well, I mean, uh, the, the little I know is that it's an integrated customs um, system mm. that is meant to be <coughs> automated right. from an end to end so that it actually is one, it's like a single window mm. uh, operation. Um, at the moment, we have uh, different vendors playing different roles along, along the value chain. Um, they also have a system is, that actually deals very well with mm. um, goods that are uh, perishable commodities and all of those things. Okay. Issues to do with uh, ensuring that the revenue uh, mobilized is secured, mm. um, little human intervention mm. and all that. And so for me, um, the work has been done, mm. a lot of processes have gone through, they have done all their uh, various activations and piloting and everything that suggests that this system is it's, it's actually more robust and it takes away from all the various um, other uh, human interventions. Plus, okay using different vendors for mm -hmm. the same thing. I thought, uh, I thought, talking I thought about, the GC, we are talking GC about, let me, let I thought me, the GC net let, and let West Blue, let me finish. So we're, we're doing we're that. We're talking about trade facilitation okay. here, which is extremely important. Uh, we live in a sub-region where, um, by virtue of where we are located mm -hmm. uh, uh, geographically, mm -hmm. and uh, our position even geopolitically, mm -hmm. um, if we get this right, Ghana essentially becomes a hub for a lot of fantastic things. We've right. just done an upgrade of our port. Mm. We have uh, one going ongoing at Tem uh, Takra Day okay, as we speak. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Ghana has signed on to the ACTA and the headquarters is actually it's here. It's going to go into yeah, full yeah. operation sometime this year and all of those things. So again, it's a big picture. Wh what is wrong with a GC net? I, I, so that, that, the, which is why we had to I, make I, it I, go I for you go, to pass I can't go up. into specifics, but I also know that some of the vendors along the value chain have had their contracts expired. Okay. Some uh, still have some uh, time left mm. that some negotiation have been done to uh, get them to uh, compensate it or whatever mm. so mm. that you would have one single uh, source of actually doing these things. Mm. And that's what I'm saying, that we have to look at it from a big picture okay. perspective when it comes to this that trade facilitation is extremely important. It makes us competitive. Mm. Mm. It gives us an advantage over our competitors and all of those things. And then ease of doing business and all of this is, is key. Okay. And even securing government revenue, where hitherto we've had issues to do with shortfalls and mm. uh, revenue, uh, revenue mobilization and all of that. And that I believe strongly that the reason why uh, a superior system has actually been put in place. Okay. To answer the question as to what, what's, what's, what's wrong, wrong with GC Net and West Blue, I can't bring you the past. I, I won't be able to answer that. Okay. But all I'm saying is that in any of these things that is done by government, there's always this 
uh, uh, thread that runs through it, where mm. people say, oh, there's not enough consultation, uh, the stakeholders have not been done. But you see, government is mandated to take decisions. Some of the decisions are hard. But in the final analysis, okay. it's for the betterment of the general mm. public or for the general good of the country. So mm. I, I honestly think that this whole resistance to it is because one is change. Okay. It's a, the same thing happened when this uh, uh, paper system okay. was, was introduced, yeah. and we want to uh, the uh, there's another one, the cargo tracking yeah. thing. Mm. You know, because people would resist because they're used to a certain way of doing okay. it. But I believe strongly that. With all of these things, mm. because enough consultation has been done, and I'm aware, uh, coming from the uh, Ministry of Trade, that okay. enough consultation has been done with some of these things. But okay. in all of these things, again, you will not get everybody agreeing that it's in their interest because they are all, almost always parochial expediency. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. That <clears throat> Thank you. President of the Ghana Institute of Freight Forwarders, give Mr. Edward Akron, in an interview, said Unipass system is all a mess because even we tried the URL and it was not working, not to talk of other challenges we've had with this, their so-called superior system. If we do not do this right, there's going to be pure recipe for chaos. There will be a serious disruption. The government must withdraw the letter immediately. Unipass is not ready. And we are looking at 29 uh, million in excess of that, 92 million in excess of that. Did you take a bite on this no, one? No, I mean, so quickly, superior, superior I setup. Mean, so far, so far, we have not been sure by way of either demonstration or anything how superior this Unipass arrangement is. And it's for $93 million. Mm. For Christ's sake. I mean, like we say, if the system is not broken. Mm. Why would you want to fix it? As we speak, we have the GCNet, we have the West, uh, Blue. West Blue system functioning. Mm. Government had not demonstrated that there had been revenue shortfall because of the current arrangement. People are resisting change. That's what and that is. by bringing this, they are going to have superior revenue, whatever. People are resisting change. What is the change are we, are we talking about? Look, Principal stakeholders like freight forwarders, mm. the association, they have spoken. But this government has adopted a very arrogant posture. We don't care. Once we have decided that this is what we want to do, that is what we want to do. Uh, your father knows what and is good for you. So if you ask for candies, your father may decide that you have had too many candies and we cannot give you candies. Not this kind of father. This kind of father whose only interest is making more money, more money into their private pockets. That's not fair. To Regrettably, say. that's the situation. Ordinarily, you know, I wouldn't say anything like that. But the motivation is nothing by money. More money. Single source. And, 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 and sometimes when you look at the fact that my brother Eric in the past could criticize the NDC on single source, so source, oh, it was a critique. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today, this one, it did not go through any competitive tendering process. <clears throat> It was so sauce. This is something that was criticized in the past. I think that what's a position? Kufado what's a position and on? his ministers mm. should go back and engage the principal stakeholders in this whole business. That is the freight forwarders. We, are, we have ninety-two million dollars staring in our face. If we pull out, we pay no, that. And that is why sometimes some of these public officers who engage in some of this conduct. We need to watch them carefully. Okay. But you see, so that I can leave. Uh, our time, our time oh, no, is 30 up. seconds. You mm -hmm. know, Parliament graciously approved the Akufuado uh, Hotel Tax Waiver. That's how the minority describe it. What is that? And we are giving waiver? them prime land worth oh, $80 million dollars, plus tax waiver of $23 million. Dollars. In all, $50 million, dollars, almost a dash. This company is bringing what, what nothing. Do we, what do we get in return? Nothing. How do ah, you know? Nothing. nothing. You see, what you see, are you getting? You see, you see, you see, you see, you see, you I mean, <laughs> I, uh, it's, a, it's, a record, it's a public record. <laughs> what uh, are we uh, getting? The defending, listen, listen. Okay. Defending people <laughs> there in court and in public. <laughs> and, it's, it's a, a and issues to do with tax waivers <laughs> okay. and even all of those okay. things. You have, you have done that. Okay. okay. You understand? And what is constitution? And the thing has gone to parliament. Okay. Parliament has uh, seen it. And again, the minority yeah. is part of parliament. Okay. And it sees them. What is wow. expedient for them to say that it's, it's Eric parliament Chum. when it sees Eric them? Eric is the minority a member of the it. MPP's communication team. And uh, he has filed for the Fantiaqua South I wish uh, seat. He is hoping 
to grab it. I wish him very well. And uh, Thank you. I hope that um, the people in Fantiakwa South will make a very strong case for for Eric to, to go to Parliament and represent him. You hardly find a lot of uh, intellectual uh, young people who want to represent their people in Parliament. He's had international exposure, he's had local exposure, and I think he'll make a very fine uh, member of Parliament. So, Thank you. Eric, congratulations Thanks to you. Thanks a lot. And also to lawyer Edujita Maklo. He's a member of the NDC's um, legal and communications team has joined me here on a ticket of the NDC. And uh, uh, this is from Robert Coleman, formerly of Zoom Line. It says, uh, Eddie was more than a brother to me. I'm so devastated by his demise. This is a big blow. He really played a role in my career as communications manager of Zoom Lion. It's so sad. May his soul rest in perfect peace. That's from uh, Robert Coleman. Then